Welcome back everyone. Been a bit of a pause between some of my uploads and that's because of my busy work schedule. And of course with some of the money I've earned working as hard as I have, I've been buying a lot and I do mean a lot of Saab parts for my next project car and some goodies for the protege as well, those of which will be featured in upcoming episodes so make sure you tune in for that. In today's video I want to show you how you can upgrade your protege shift knob with an LED version. This is something a bit on the more premium side. Uh, features such as this can be found in some of BMW's older E36 and E46 cars and can also be found in the European market MK2 NB Miata. So uh, real quick let's jump in so I can show you uh, how and where you can buy these high quality shift knobs. The website is called Innovative Car Tech. They sell LED shift knobs for a wide variety of cars. They are based and manufactured out of Germany and the merchandise is pretty good. Um, now I'm not affiliated with the company in any way and this is definitely not an advertisement for them though uh, once this video is uploaded I'm sure they'll get a few sales from being featured on my channel so hopefully I'll pick up some subscribers it'll be a win-win for everyone but uh, just want to let you know first things first they don't make a shift knob specifically for the Mazda Protégé only for the Miata cars but the good news is that the shift rod diameter and thread pitch is exactly the same between the MK2 MX5 and the Protégé so the parts will fit a beat some minor modifications of course but I'm going to be showing you how to do that later to order simply go to the website innovativecartech.de in the search bars select Mazda MX-5 there will be some drop down menus that will appear uh, these will allow you to select the car of your choice and for some reason my computer screen capture function doesn't show the drop down menus uh, actually appear rather it just shows the text appear the search bars but um, you get the idea click find click on MX5 and some shift knob styles and options uh, will populate on the screen now for the protege I wanted something that would look more at home and fit the design language with the rest of the interior of the car so I chose the first uh, option out of the three available ones you see there Next, you can choose the trim finish on the shift knob, brushed aluminum, chrome, or gloss black trim. I chose brushed aluminum, then you can select the shift gate styling. You can then choose what color the LED should be. I chose green as the factory lighting in my Mazda Protégé is green. If you have a Mazda Speed version, you can choose red. Finally, you can pick your shift boot styling, and for the Protégé, this is a non-issue because these shift boots that come with these shift knobs do not fit because they're made for Miatas, but you'll see that later in the video. You can cycle through these photos and look at the shift knobs in different styles, colors, and finishes. The price for the one I built here is 69 euros. Add your shipping details, choose your payment options, and make your purchase. In approximately two and a half weeks you should get the parts and this is what it looked like. You can see the high quality leather and craftsmanship. If only the shift boots was a little bit longer. One of the first things you'll need to do when you get your new shift knob is wrap the wiring in some protective shrink wrap as I have done here. This is one thing that I particularly dislike about these is that the wiring is on the fragile side. I've had to order two of these because I've made some boo-boos and screwed up the wiring too close to the knob and it couldn't be fixed. My only option was to buy another shift knob. That could use some improvement so if you guys are watching this, meaning innovativecartech.de, you know, make the wiring a little bit more robust. I would suggest before even installing it in the car do yourself a favor and wait buy a separate shift boot that fits the protege or use your pre-existing one, mount it to the knob and then add the protective covering over the wires. It will save you some headaches, believe me on this one. When you get the shift knob, the wires will be routed through the middle of the opening. This needs to be rerouted because as soon as you screw on the knob, the wires will get caught in the way of the shift rod and get severed. Guess how I found that out. You will need to reroute the wires through the small openings as shown here. 
preferably after you get a shift boot to fit. Once rerouted, slip some small heat shrink covering over the wires and through the small bores. Heat it so it shrinks around the wire so it protects the wires from becoming severed from any sharp corners as they protrude through the small bores. You will then need to attach two male or female blade connectors to the wires at the end. You can use whatever connectors you want. I just chose blade connectors as they are easy to find and readily available in most hardware stores. Now this shift knob won't screw onto the Protégé shift rod all the way and you'll see why in a minute. The Miata and the Protégé have the same thread pitch and shaft diameter but the shift rods are shaped a little bit differently. So you'll need to remove the Protégé shifter assembly to modify the shift rod. There are four 10mm nuts and four wide washers holding it to the floor. These will need to be removed. You will need to unbolt the catalyst from the exhaust system and you may need to remove the heat shielding. Next, remove the shift rod from the shifter assembly. Now these are Cork Sport brass oil bushings that I had installed earlier. I don't have any video footage of these being put in since it was done in a hurry, but if you ever want to remove some slop from your protege shifter assembly, now will be the perfect time to do it. It's simple to do as well. Now detach the shift rod from the transmission and remove the shift assembly from the car. Here's what it looks like on the table. To disassemble, you will need a set of snap ring pliers. This is kind of tricky. It took me a few tries to finally get the snap ring out, but that's because it sits so low in the assembly. But I did finally get it out. When disassembling these components, take note of the order in which the parts come out. You wouldn't want to get these all mixed up. Oh yeah, the liquid that came out of the assembly? That's not water, that's brake parts cleaner. I sprayed some of that inside to help loosen up the hardened grease and dirt. Note the order of the parts laid on the table and also take note of the square shoulder on the shift rod weight. This is the part that needs modification. Here is one of the shift knobs I screwed up from earlier. You can see that the knob will screw on but it stops short because of the shape inside the knob is a cone and the rod has a square shoulder. The square shoulder prevents the shift knob from being secured all the way down on the rod. To reshape the square shoulder of the shift rod weight, simply use a table grinder and grind the weight into a cone shape. Depending on the grit of the grinding stone, this can become time consuming. You're basically going to turn the rod against the stone as you see being performed here. You would do so at an angle to get the cone shape desired effect. Once the cone shape appears, you can do a test fit and in this case, the shape is sufficient. Here's a steel shot of what it should look like. Afterwards, to prevent oxidation and rusting, I applied some aerosol epoxy primer. Reassemble and remount everything back inside the car. Once all the mounting hardware is tight, a quick roll through the cogs ensures the shifter feels true and correct.
Next, sorting out the simple power and ground assignments will be necessary. I decided that since the circuit is simple, there is no real advantage to making it complex. So I will be using electrical splices instead of crimping. The power for the LED shift knob was sourced from the signal wire that provides the climate control LEDs with current. That will be this green and black wire I'm holding here. As for the ground, it couldn't have been simpler. I simply use a self-tapping screw to ground it to the dashboard frame. Once that's done, you can test fit the shift knob. As you can see, the shift knob looks very at home in the protege cabin against the interior surroundings. However, as mentioned before, the shift boot is way too short and still needs to be addressed. When you make shift throws, the boot stretches and pulls out of place. To solve this, I turn to Redline Leather Goods. A word of advice I would suggest. I would suggest you buy the boot and the shift knob at the same time. If you've ever ordered anything from Redline Goods, it can take a while, but when received, the boot is very high quality as expected and the same length as the factory equipment. Here are some photos. In order to get the boot off, you'll need to remove three small Allen hex plugs. They're like 2mm as shown here. Again, to prevent any problems, fitting the boot should be one of the first steps because if you try to do it later, you will face some difficulties with the wiring. Once the hex plugs are removed, you simply remove the black plastic sleeve. A bit of force is required to remove it since it's pressed on over the first leather boot. All of this is done with the knob upside down, so pay particular attention to how the pieces come apart. Once you get the boot on, you can now permanently mount the shift knob inside the car. Now I filmed this in low light so you'll have to forgive the video quality. Now that's the shift boot in the proper length. You can make shift throws without the boot stretching and pulling out of place. Soon after, I was able to take some still shots in darker settings so you can see how the shift knob illuminates in the dark and looks perfectly at home. The LED goes perfect with the other instrument lights. It's not too bright or dim. It's the perfect complement to the protege interior. Coming up next, a problem that plagues just about every protege out there. High oil consumption and engine failure. My opinion on what causes it and some things that can possibly prevent it from occurring. All that and more right here on Retro Car Style where we make daily drivers better. Stay tuned.